Welcome to another experience with the Methodist Voices in Word and Song, Television Ministry. We are so happy you could join us. Today is the 27th Lord's Day after Pentecost. Please have your hymnals and Bibles ready, even as we observe October as Ministry and Youth Month and celebrate in word and song. I am Monique Jack, student at the United Theological College of the West Indies. I will be your liturgist today. The message will be brought to us by Reverend Dr. Karen Durant McSweeney, Senior Ministerial Tutor at the United Theological College of the West Indies. We are truly delighted to have her deliver the message today. Each Lord's Day at 1.30 p.m., when we gather online, we can make the worship experience more meaningful by resisting the urge to engage in other tasks while we worship and where possible to give full attention to God and so receive the blessing reserved for you and your loved ones. We will now have the introit. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Number one in our voices in praise. join me in our call to worship. We have come to worship God, our Creator, who calls us to leave behind the ways of the world and to be transformed into the, way of the ways of God. We have come to worship Jesus Christ, our Savior, who made it possible for us to have a transforming relationship with God. We have come to worship the Holy Spirit, our Enabler, who gives us gifts to serve God and God's people. Let us worship God together. Our opening hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, number five in our voices in praise. Oh, <laughs> 
of Adoration will be led by our brother Oberlin Dossier. The prayer of adoration. Creator God, you are great and marvelous and worthy. Of our praise, we are look at your creation. We see the evidence of our greatness and wisdom. You are a mighty God. You are gracious and compassionate God, who is God to all. Because of your mercy and grace, you have given us gifts and ability to serve you. You are a faithful God on whom we can depend for you never leave us nor forsake. Use and you continue to empower us for your service. You are just and with us and love all whom you have created. So we praise and adore to today of God. Amen. The Confession. We sing the chorus, Create in me a clean heart, O God. confession we pray together caring God you call us to be the body of Christ to live in community to care for one another to use our different gifts instead of working to sustain community we follow our own desires instead of trusting in your care we think we can do it alone forgive our neglect of others Forgive us for our failure to use our gifts for your honor and glory, and forgive us for not responding to your call. Amen. Please receive the assurance of pardon. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear then the good news. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Our sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. The thanksgiving, we sing the chorus, give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. 
of thanksgiving. Gracious God, we thank you for your grace and mercy, which has caused you to forgive us from our sins. We thank you for choosing us to be your children and to be partners with you in your mission in the world. We thank you that you have not call, only called us, but you have given us gifts to serve you in this world. We thank you for your constant provision, your continual presence, and faithfulness to us. For all your goodness towards us, we give you thanks, O Lord. Amen. At this time, we invite Brother Victor Maxwini to lead us in our children and youth focus. Hi, Uncle. Can I say something? Oh, yes, go ahead, Susie. Thank you for taking me to the store. Oh, I really appreciate that. I want to thank you also for making up your bed this morning. And that reminds me of the lesson today. The Apostle Paul wrote to Christians, people who love Jesus, and they, and, um, they were Thessalon Thessalonians. And uh, he was so thankful for them because they were serving God. Uh-huh. Why? Well, they were under pressure. People didn't like them. People, people, people hurt them. Why? Well, because they loved Jesus. And they wanted to please Jesus with their lives. And some people were not happy. And despite all of that, these Christians were still thankful and happy. Wow, can you imagine that? Wow. You know, just yesterday, it was raining. And I was a little bit upset because I wanted to go out and I didn't want to get wet. But when I remembered what the Christians were doing in, um, in Thessalonica, then I realized that I need to be thankful even for the rain. Yes, in everything you need to be thankful. Yes, all right. So, um, but why do you think God wants us to be thankful? Well, I think God wants us to be th thankful because he wants us to be happy. People don't like to be around people who are miserable. And also, God is a command. God wants us to give thanks in everything. Now think about it, Susie, and also you boys and girls. God wants us to be thankful. Not all the time things will be, will be pleasing or make us happy, but he says in every situation, when it rains, when we cannot go to school, when we didn't do well with our exam, he wants us also to be thankful. And I think the main reason is because God is with us. Yes. And God being with us, God will help us to... To, to accomplish whatever we need to accomplish because he will be with us and he will speak to us and he will guide us. I like that. So let me encourage us boys and girls this morning. As we, as we live our daily lives, as we have friends, let's remember God wants us to be thankful because when we are thankful, we, we, are, we are happy. And not only happy, but we please God. And that's what you want to do, right, Susie? Yes, I always want to be thankful. Yes, I too always want to be thankful. So let's remember that, to always be thankful. Thankful. Thank you. <laughs> yes, be thankful. Okay, boys and girls. We now turn our attention to the ministry of the word. Let us pray the colors together. Almighty God, you have entrusted to your church a share in the ministry of your son, our great high priest, inspired by your Holy Spirit, the hearts of many to offer themselves for the ministry of your church, the strengthening by his power, they may work for the increase of your kingdom and set forward the eternal praise of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for today will be led by Brother John Fanel Tannis. Old Testament reading, Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 9. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you of 
great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless that who bless you, and the one you curses, you will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham went as the Lord has told him, and Lot with him. Abraham was 75 years old when they departed from Aaron. Abraham took his wife, Sarah, and his brother's son, Luke, and all the possessions that they had gathered, and the persons whom they had carried in Aaron. And they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abraham passed off the land of the place at Sishon to the oak of Moah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who, have, who had appeared to him. From there he moved on to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abraham journey on by stages to all the natures. This is the word of, of God. Thanks be to God. The responsive reading from Psalm 62, verse 5 to 12, or 600 in our voices in praise. We read responsively. For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, I shall not be shaken. On God rest my deliverance and my honor. My mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a bread. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God. And steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay to all according to their work. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our epistle reading will be led by Reverend Alicia Steele. The epistle reading comes to us from Romans chapter 12, reading from verse 1 to 8. Here begins the reading. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we are many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many are one body in Christ. And individually, we are members one of another. 
We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing together the hymn, Lord, thy word abide it, 175 in our voices in praise. Gospel will be read by Dr. the Reverend Karen Durant McSweeney, after which she will deliver our message for today. The Gospel according to Mark chapter 1, verses 14 to 20. Glory to you, O God. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, 
he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ, our Lord. The theme of the message today is responding to the call, and the text comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 16 to 20. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we listen to your word, as you speak to us, may you open our hearts to hear from you. And so may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together be found acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We have all experienced being called for various purposes. We are called to do errands. We are called for a job interview or for a job offer. And in all of these occasions when we receive a call, the expectation is that we will respond. In our text for today, we see that Jesus called some persons and they responded to the call. As we are in Ministries Month, it is a good time for us to recognize that like Jesus called the first disciples, in the same way, God is calling us all into ministry. What does it mean to be called by God? It is an invitation by God to fulfill God's purpose for our lives. And so God is calling, and we need to respond to that call. Our text for today, Mark chapter 1, verses 16 to 20, records the account of Jesus calling his first disciples. This account comes right at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, and it is told in all four Gospels. We see here in Mark that Jesus had come out of the desert having been tempted by the devil. And after he heard that John was arrested, Jesus moved to Galilee where he began his ministry. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw four fishermen. First, he saw Simon and Andrew as they were casting a net into the sea. Jesus told them to follow him, and he will make them fish for people. Mark then records that they left their nets immediately and followed Jesus. Jesus went further along and saw James and John with their father Zebedee in the boat, mending their nets. Jesus called them, and they too left immediately and followed Jesus. We are not given any details about any conversation that they may have had with Jesus before they decided to follow. Mark did not see the importance of giving us any more details because this would have probably been enough for the Christian community to which he was writing. This community of Christians was facing persecution under Emperor Nero who wanted the Christians to leave Rome because they were blamed for a fire that destroyed a slum in Rome. And so Christians were slaughtered, and they were being looked at suspiciously. In the midst of such persecution and suffering, the Christians to whom Mark wrote were struggling with the question of how they should respond in the midst of such evil. For Mark, the way to live in the midst of this suffering is to identify with Jesus, to live for Jesus, and to follow Jesus. And so Mark presents Jesus calling persons to follow him, to identify with him right at the beginning of his ministry. First, there is the call to repentance and faith. 
as Jesus preached, repent and believe in the good news. And then once a person has repented, that is turned away from sin and turned to Jesus Christ, then there is a further call to discipleship, a call to follow and to be identified with Jesus. Like Jesus called these first disciples to identify with him, to follow him, in the same way Jesus calls us to follow him. But he calls, and we need to respond to the call. When he called these disciples, they responded in obedience. And today, God is calling persons to be a part of God's ministry. And like the disciples, we need to respond to that call in obedience. In order to respond to the call in obedience, it requires, first of all, faith, and secondly, the willingness to sacrifice. Let us examine these two aspects of responding obediently to the call of Jesus. Firstly, in order to respond in obedience to the call, it requires faith. For Peter, Andrew, James, and John to leave immediately and follow Jesus, it was a response of faith. They did not know where they were going, neither did they know the extent of what was required of them. And so to respond to Jesus' call, it requires faith. When Jesus preached and called persons to repentance, he said, repent and believe in the good news. To respond to the message of salvation, one has to believe that Jesus died for our sins and that we can be saved because of the sacrifice that Jesus made. And this belief is faith. And so the first step to responding to Jesus Christ is faith, believing. And when we respond to Christ's call, we have to continue to live a life of faith. For many times, we will not understand the direction that God is calling us to go. We will not always understand the reason why God is calling us to a particular task. And so we must respond with a radical faith that will cause us to just go and to do what God is asking us to do. If I may give an example from my own life, my first profession is as a medical doctor. And this was a dream I had since I was 13 years old, to be a doctor. And I got that opportunity by receiving a scholarship from the government of Guyana to do medicine. When I was convicted of my call to ministry, I was doing my internship. And so I completed my training, and then I candidated for the ministry. For me, I did not understand. I couldn't understand why God would allow me to go through medical school and then call me into the ministry. However, even though I did not understand, and, and the, uh, the, the, the challenge too was, while I was waiting to go to medical school, persons were telling me about ministry, but I had no such conviction. But while I did not understand why God was calling me at that point, I was convicted that this was what God wanted me to do. And so even though I did not understand, in confidence that God knows what is best, I offered myself for ministry in the church. I yielded to the will of God. Faith is also necessary for there are times when the call is difficult, when we may not believe that we have what it takes to do what God is asking of us. We may say, how can God call me, this shy person who cannot speak? Or how can God call me, this person who do, does not know how to read? How can God call me into a ministry in which I may not make enough money to take care of myself and my family? When these doubts come, it is our faith in God, faith in knowing that God will not abandon us, that God will equip those whom God has called, that God will enable us, that will enable us to respond to the God's call, even in the midst of doubt. 
The response of faith is so important that the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever would approach him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. And so whatever may be preventing you from responding to God's call upon your life, you are called to respond in faith. And God will work out whatever the situation may be. And secondly, not only do we need to respond in faith, but in responding to God's call, we must be willing to make sacrifices. The disciples made a sacrifice in responding to Jesus' call. We are told that Simon and Andrew left their nets and followed. James and John left their father with the hired men. And so these disciples left their occupation. They left what they knew. They left their families to follow Jesus. And this was a sacrifice. It is said that fishermen were not badly off, for they were between the rich and the poor. And the fact that James and John had hired servants, it tells us that they were not poor people. And also, it was important in Jewish custom to honor your family. And so for them to leave their father and follow Jesus, that was going against the cultural norm. And so it was a sacrifice for them to leave their livelihood and all that they knew to follow Jesus. How were they going to live? How were they going to eat? Maybe they asked those questions, we do not know. But what we know is that they left and they followed. The word that is used for left comes from a Greek word that means to let go or to give up. And so it emphasizes the sacrifices that they made. They gave up everything that mattered to them in order to follow Jesus. Likewise, we need to be willing to make sacrifices to follow Jesus. Sometimes, like the disciples, we have to give up our jobs, like those of us who are called into full-time ministry. And even if it is into any kind of ministry, a sacrifice will be required. You have to sacrifice time, as it is going to require you giving up some of your time that you may have spent doing other things in order to do the work of God. And you see, many times, we don't want to respond to the call of God because the sacrifice is too great. These disciples give us an example that to respond to the call of God, we must be willing to give all of self. And this requires a sacrifice as we will have to set aside our own desires and our own will so that God's purposes can be fulfilled in our lives. In the month of January every year, we are reminded in our covenant service that Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy and others are difficult. Some bring honor and others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our taste and compatible with our ambitions and others are contrary to both. In some, we may please Christ and ourselves. In others, we cannot please Christ if we do not deny ourselves. That is the nature of the sacrifice that responding to the call of God requires. And so therefore, God is calling us like Jesus called the first disciples. And just as it is necessary to respond when we receive a call from friends or families, in the same way when God calls us, we need to respond in obedience. To respond in obedience it requires faith and a willingness to make sacrifices, to sacrifice self and our own desires. Like Jesus called the disciples, like God called me, so God is calling you, what is going to be your response? God calls us first and foremost to repent of our sins and to give our lives to Jesus. 
And then he calls us to follow him, to be his disciples, and to be involved in his ministry. And so my challenge to you today is whatever God is calling you to do, you need to take a step of faith and respond in obedience to that call. Amen. Let us pray. Calling God, as you call many persons in the past, so you continue to call persons today to follow you and submit to your will. May those who hear your call respond with obedience and faith. Amen. We thank Dr. The Reverend Karen Durant McSweeney for her word to us today. We hope that we will be obedient to the call of God upon our lives, and we will do so with faith. In response to the message, we sing together the hymn, Here I Am, Lord, 455 in our voices in praise.
We give thanks to all who continue to support this ministry by viewing and participating actively in the televised service. We remind you that this worship experience is designed to engage you in an active worship on screen. As such, we ask that weekly as the hymns are announced and passages are read, you will also use your hymnals and Bibles to stay engaged, sing, read the scripture, and pray with us as you are prompted on screen, as if you were in physical worship. For your convenience, we share the order of service used each time with all who will receive. If you are not already on our mailing list, please request the order at main office at jamaicamethodist.org and you will be added. You may also visit the district website at www.jamaicamethodist.org to download the documents. We are grateful to you for your contribution to this ministry and its upkeep on air. Please make note of the contact details on screen to make your financial contribution to this effort. We need your support. Let us now give thanks for what we already receive and what we anticipate you will offer for this wonderful work. Let us pray. God who provides, we bless your name for your gifts freely given to us. We are mindful that what we possess really belongs to you and that we are merely stewards of these tangible gifts in serving others till you return. We thank you for those who continue to share in the work of proclaiming the good news of salvation through television, the internet, and the World Wide Web by the offering of their time, talent, and resources. Amen. Intercessory prayers. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Let us pray for the world. God of transformation, we pray for nations suffering from war, the tourists of material possessions, poverty and injustice. Transform the lives of world leaders, giving them hearts of peace and unity. Transform mindsets and, and expand vision so that the world may know that there is more to life than food and clothing. May the world experience a transformation from having a mind like yours that is always concerned for the other to ensure that every brother or sister is taken care of. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for the church. Calling God, you continue to call men and women into your ministry, and some have responded to that call and have dedicated their lives to your service, while others have been holding back from responding for various reasons. We pray that you may continue to empower those who have already responded, that they may remain faithful to you. For those who are yet to say yes to your call, may your Holy Spirit continue to stir their hearts and bring them to that point of submission to your will. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for the Caribbean. God of liberation, we pray that you may remove pride, political corruption, and neocolonialism. Through your liberating power, break mental and spiritual shackles. Grant us renewed sight to understand that there is greater strength in unity guided by you. Grant our leaders renew ours to genuinely and selfless serve, serve our people. Grant us renew mind to know that in Christ there is neither first world nor third world, big island nor small island, rich nor poor, brown nor black, but all are one in Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray for Jamaica. God of restoration, we pray that you may remove despair and hopelessness, pain and anger. Through your victory, 
bring healing and restoration to board perpetrators and victims of abuse, to those suffering from illnesses, to those mourning over loss. We pray that you may transform the hearts of those who are involved in gangs and violence so that they may be peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Unite as a body of Christ. We lift these prayer prayers to you, Savior God. Hear us now, we pray, in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, and soon coming King, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Amen. Father, who art Lord, in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our closing aim, O thou who camest from above, 232 in our voices in praise. As we bring our service to a close for today, we invite Dr. the Reverend Karen Durant McSweeney to lead us in the benediction. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the unconditional love of God, and the fellowship of the ever-present Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore and enable us to respond in obedience to God's call upon our lives. Amen.